in the beginning. You really can't talk about the beginnings of Lame de Boulet without first giving a little bit of background about Sigma Pi Phi fraternity. The founding of the Boulet is very interesting. We're talking about the turn of the century. Uh, the Sigma Pi Phi fraternity uh, represents the very first historically African-American fraternity of men. And it was founded in Philadelphia in 1904. But let's just back up just a little bit and take a glimpse at what life was for the black community. Uh, we know having just recently celebrated Juneteenth, uh, that what that was all about, uh, the slaves uh, in the state of uh, Texas getting the word much later that at least the emancipation uh, had already happened. Uh, and with emancipation came uh, quite a resistance from uh, much of the white community and particularly white Southerners. Uh, newly freed slaves in the last quarter of the 19th century, just prior to when Sigma Pi Phi fraternity began, had experienced a little taste of what life could be, only to have it snatched from them. And th at the turn of the century, the worst uh, killings and lynchings, uh, which is a movement all unto itself. Uh, w when I'm teaching black history, I don't just talk about slavery. I talk about the slavery that existed after slavery um, and the, the uh, rise of the Klan and other white citizens groups and so on. Born out of this situation was a group all of whom were medical, uh, in, in medical fields, most of them physicians, uh, came together because they were bound by likeness and, and shared uh, systems of, of belief and apparently philosophy. And they got together and they found this bond amongst them and decided to organize. And from that initial group, uh, they were smart enough to realize that if the crop is good, you want to grow it. So that first group of, of what we call our alpha chapter, uh, that first group uh, spread to uh, the second group, uh, uh, beta in Chicago and, 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 and so on. So much so that there are now over 5,000 men and, and way over 100 uh, member boulets throughout the country. That's important to know because it was essentially that philosophical and social cultural imperative that they understood that helped to shape another kind of fraternal explosion that came shortly thereafter. For black people to survive this oppressive state we find ourselves in. We gotta use our minds. So we gotta value education. We have to value education. That will be, perhaps, we felt, certainly during segregation days, our best ticket. That would be the best way we could arm ourselves. So when somebody says, I ain't got time for fraternity, sir, that's fine. I don't try to argue with them long about that. Uh, hopefully they'll see the light and they'll see the good that comes 
from all of these sororities and fraternities. But the very first one was Sigma Pi Phi that provided a, a framework upon which the work that was done uh, and all of the others, Sigma Pi Phi helped to be a beacon of light. Lambda Belay was founded in Columbus, Ohio in 1921. It was founded by a man named Truman Gibson who came from Atlanta from the Mu Belay, Kappa Belay, to help create the Lambda Belay chapter. There were six initial men inducted. Each were men of prosperity in Columbus, African-American men. From some were uh, medical doctors, some were lawyers, primarily, a couple educators. These men were considered leaders in the African-American community, particularly in the Link King Lincoln District. The reason why this, chap this membership was created, based on what was going on in the country at the time, after World War I, there was a lot of continued impoverishment of African-Americans in the country, lack of access to education, lack of a lot of, a lot of the diversity opportunities that weren't being given to us. And the Sigma Pi Phi National Organization saw Columbus as a city of prosperity for African Americans. So by bringing them here, the goal was to establish a base for African Americans in Columbus to advance forward in housing, removing poverty, uh, bringing medical, retail, other things to the city of Columbus. Well-known Boule members in Columbus include such icons as Kurt Moody, who was the founder and president of the largest minority-owned architectural firm in the world, right here in the city of Columbus. A great man, Louis Smoot. Uh, founder of, uh, not founder, but president of uh, Smoot uh, Construction Company. Great company, minority owned. People know him all over the nation. Uh, Otto Beatty. Uh, Otto Beatty, a great lawyer, uh, done great things in this community as well. Everybody knows Otto Beatty. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. Ted McDaniels, you know, a great musician, uh, one of the best there is out there. My favorite boule event is the Christmas is for the Arcusa event because we come together, black tie, the Arcusa are beautiful in their evening gowns and their outstanding outfits and it's fun we come together and have fun and that's what I enjoy about Boule is we enjoy the company of one another and the quality of that event is of the highest quality because we're honoring our spouses and our Akusa so I always enjoy that we always have fun dancing and the uh, older generation, like myself, we still do the electric slide, but the younger generation has all kinds of new moves. But everybody has a good time, and it's a, a, an opportunity during the holiday season to say thank you to one another and to really express the appreciation that we have for one another in terms of all the things we do during the year, whether it's the mentoring we do, the scholarship program that we do, the uh, other kinds of uh, community events that we support and sponsor. Christmas for the Akusa is always an enjoyable event and my wife and I have loved that particular event. You know, as, as I've described my background to you, my parents uh, didn't have 
a, a college education, uh, not to mention the, the professional background that you typically see with Lambda Boule members. Uh, and I was not exposed to or had experience with Lambda or any other uh, Sigma Pi Phi or any other fraternities uh, coming up uh, up until the time that I went to undergrad, uh, which we've had that conversation where I found out about Alpha Phi Alpha uh, and that experience. Uh, I was introduced to Sigma Pi Phi uh, through some professional friends in Sacramento. So Boule has been a part of my life for as long as I could remember. My great uncle was in a Boule, in a, in a Boule in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was very close to our family. We called him Uncle Bud. And for any Boule meeting, or any time he came to Atlanta, or any time we came to Atlanta, he would want to take my father to his Boule meetings, and vice versa. When uh, he would come up to Columbus, my father would do the same. And that was something that was very near and dear to my Uncle Bud, who I cherished. Um, and who uh, was a, a big part of my life when I was at Morehouse College. In addition uh, to my uncle, my great uncle and my father, uh, my father's brother, my uncle, is in the Boule, in, in, in a Boule in uh, the Washington DC area. I also have an uncle on my mother's side who uh, is uh, in a Boule in Atlanta, Georgia. And then I have a cousin who is in the uh, Boule in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Anyway, I heard about the Boule because there were a couple brothers that were alphas that were in the Boule. And they talk about this other fraternity and say, well, wait a minute, you're, are you an alpha or are you a, you know, what's this other thing? So I learned a little bit about it, but then about 10 years ago, it's been about 10 years since I've been in the Boule, somebody approached me and said, hey, um, uh, we're, we're, we got another class coming in. Would you, would you consider being part of it? And so we checked it out. You know, some of the brothers that are here are really good brothers. I mean, you would know most of them if I mentioned their names, but just really good guys and, and what they were trying to do uh, to be part of the community, some of the philanthropic things that they had going, some of the social activities that were. It wasn't just about becoming another member of a social thing. It was really more about the work that they were doing. Um, you know, I was not aware of the Lamb of the Boule in college out of college, uh, I'd never even heard of it. I mean, uh, uh, a friend of mine, a guy named Ralph Frazier, who was at Huntington Bank at the time, said, you know, there's a group you think you want to be part of, and I want to sponsor you uh, to come in there. But he introduced me, and, and the good thing was, is so many other successful men uh, that I would not run into without Lambda. Interestingly, I became aware of Lambda Boule in New York City. I was in New York representing the governor at that time. I was his chief legal counsel. And as you know, we drafted Ohio's Minority Business Development Act. And again, that's one of the things that I'm most um, appreciative of and proud of. And so the governor sent me to New York actually to meet with Earl Graves, who was the founder and editor of Black Enterprise. And they were gonna do a feature on the state of Ohio and the fact that we were one of the first states to pass a state minority business development act. And while I was there meeting with Earl, interestingly, John Jacobs, who at the time was the president and CEO of the Urban League, came into Earl's office and I got to meet him and they were talking and Earl said, oh, by the way, you should come to the Boulay picnic this weekend. And I must have had a quizzical look on my face because he looked at me and said, are you not a member of Boulay? Do you not know what Boulay is? And I said, well, I've always been honest and no, I do not know what Boulay is. And he said, if you are at the top of your profession and if you are a leader in your community, you definitely should be in Boulay. Boulay is committed, I think, uh, to taking action that will hopefully level the playing field for blacks uh, in society and, and every Boulay uh, 
uh, at the instance of the national, you know, Sigma Pi Phi, has been told that social action should be your priority. I mean, it's fine to have, you know, holiday party um, and gather and enjoy one another's company. There's nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. And we do that, and any professional or social organization uh, does that. But you have to have a higher purpose and, and a greater meaning. Uh, and the challenge continues. I mean, but we do have a lot of uh, initiatives to try to um, achieve those goals. I think the number one thing in my mind is mentorship. Um, you know, we've, uh, you know, sort of having a uh, affiliation with an elementary school, Wyland Elementary School, to try to help mentorship there and I think we've had an impact but I do worry that uh, you know are we doing enough to have a lasting impact you can't just go into a school and say you know I somehow made it you know I you know, pulled up my the bootstraps and made it through elementary school and high school and a nice college and professional school uh, when you're talking to kids who have nothing this one opportunity to get together. And when we get together, let's do something that's uh, concrete, let's do something that's positive, and that's gonna have a meaningful, if not lasting, impact. And when you give scholarships to outstanding students, that has a lasting impact. Because if we can change the trajectory of these families by helping out with education, then we change the trajectory of a community. You have to start there.